why aren't you consuming more olive oil? Why aren't you consuming more avocados? Seriously, you have to be doing this, especially when we start looking at the awesome new science that's coming out, proving that I could honestly say that I think olive oil avocado could be the most powerful fat-burning fats we could consume. So while everyone is focused on chugging MCT oil, which is not bad, by the way, well, not literally chugging it, but while everyone's focused on consuming so much MCT oil, they're forgetting about the powerful effects of olive oil and avocado oil when it comes down to oleic acid and the conversion into something in our body known as OEA. I know this sounds complicated, and I promise I'm going to take this complicated science and make it into something simple, but the gist of this is consume a lot of olive oil, consume a lot of avocado oil. All right, let's go ahead and roll into the science. But first, hit that red subscribe button, and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a new video. And then after this video, check out Thrive Market down below in the description online grocery store just blows the doors off of the regular grocery store because it's cheaper, it's easier, and it goes right to your doorstep. But best of all, I've been able to create my own custom boxes, keto boxes, fasting boxes, you name it, with recommended groceries from me personally. So that way you can just go grocery shopping with Thomas just online, it's pretty cool. So check them out after you watch this video. All right, so first off, we have to get this, the complicated science out of the equation and the big gobbledygook jargon words first, okay? The whole purpose of this video is talking about something that is in olive oil known as oleic acid. Oleic acid turns into something known as OEA, oleoethanolamine. And I'm not gonna say that word one more time throughout this video, I'm gonna refer to it as OEA so that I don't get jumbled and so that I don't confuse you. But this OEA is the magic stuff because what it does is it activates very specific transcription factors that ultimately allow us to literally mobilize more fat out of our stored tissues and ultimately burn it. So it increases what's called beta oxidation, how the cells use the fat, it increases lipolysis, the actual fat burning, and ultimately can increase what's called ketogenesis, creating more ketones. So if you're on a low carb diet and that's what you want, heck yeah, we're in business. Okay, so OEA creation, how does this happen? First of all, so you consume some olive oil, okay? Maybe you drizzled it on your salad, maybe you had some avocado with your eggs this morning. Okay, so the fats from those avocados and from that olive oil come into your system and they hit the small intestine and they hit the liver. And they get synthesized into this OEA through a multitude of different enzymatic functions. What's interesting though is that they also get converted or synthesized into OEA in peripheral tissues unlike other fats. Now what that means is that once you consume them and they absorb, they go to tissues within the body and they get converted into OEA throughout the course of our body and then they spill over into the bloodstream. So it's literally by like a happy accident that we end up with this byproduct of this amazing fat in our bloodstream. And this happy accident ends up making it so we burn more fat. Okay, here's the mechanism of action in which that works. The OEA then travels through the bloodstream and binds to what is called a transcription factor. Fancy jargon again. A transcription factor is basically something that activates a certain portion of our DNA to activate a certain building block of some part of our body. So this OEA binds to a transcription factor known as PPAR alpha. For you science nerds, there you go. This PPAR alpha then travels and binds to what is called a response element on the DNA. I want you to think of it like this. The DNA is ready to go, okay? It's a series, a group of construction workers ready to start building something based on our genetic blueprint. But they don't start working until they punch the clock. Well, that response element is sort of the, the clock. So we needed this transcription factor to come in and punch the clock so that the construction workers could start working based on our genetic blueprint. That's the amazing thing with genes and all that stuff. So this is called gene expression, where all of a sudden now the DNA is building based on what our genes are. Now it just so happens that this OEA activates a portion of our genetics that trigger high amounts of beta oxidation, which is our cells using fat for energy. It also triggers a lipoprotein uptake, so basically it means that uh, specific fats are gonna get utilized for the right thing and not stored in the wrong thing. Okay, additionally, what it really does is it activates something known as CD36, which is a specific transport protein for fats. Basically, 
it opens a gate so that a bunch of buses can now leave and transport fat from its storage form over to the cells. So we just turned on all the fat moving buses. But it does one other cool thing. It activates something known as uncoupling protein 2, one of my favorite proteins in the body. Why? Because what uncoupling protein does is, is it turns white fat into brown fat. White fat is ugly, unsightly, stored fat. Brown fat is fat that has a thermogenic purpose in our body. It actually burns calories because brown fat actually has a sort of a mitochondrial vibration that creates heat. Okay, white fat sits there, it's ugly, does nothing but insulate us. Brown fat serves a purpose because it actually generates heat. So what this does is it means that olive oil and avocado oil end up making it so that white fat turns into brown fat and actually serves a calorie burning purpose. Now, as if we couldn't get more nerdy and complicated, this OEA also binds to a vanilloid type receptor, which triggers a surge of oxytocin, which basically means that you have a signal that goes from your vagus nerve up through your digestive system, up to your hypothalamus in your brain to tell you to stop eating. If you ever consume olive oil, you will tremendously notice that you don't feel hungry afterwards. This is why. Huge surges in oxytocin. Let's talk about some research journals so that you know I'm not full of baloney. So the Journal of Biochemistry published a study. They took rats, okay, and these rats, they injected with OEA, okay, the stuff we're talking about. What they found is after injecting the rats with OEA, they had a huge uptick in circulating glycerol, not esterified fatty acids, and ultimately ketones. Okay, so what they discovered through this, what this means, is that when they gave the rats OEA, it released fat in its whole form from a triglyceride into the bloodstream. Okay, fats are bound to a glycerol molecule. So fats are three fatty acids bound to a glycerol backbone, triglycerides. So what they found is that, well, magically, there was glycerol floating around and there were fatty acids floating around. That indicates only one thing. It liberated triglycerides. It liberated those. Now, the rats that didn't have OEA, that didn't happen. So OEA with no calories coming in, just straight up OEA, triggered the release of the triglycerides, ultimately leading to an increase in ketones because fats magically got released. And I say magically because this is about as close to magic as you can get. They also found that that whole PPAR thing I was talking about, the transcription factor, they found that that was required for the fats that were mobilized to ultimately get burned. Okay, so it was a two-part equation that OEA solved the problem with. Okay, they also found, of course, that OEA did trigger oxytocin, which is known as the cuddle hormone or sort of the, the, uh, the hug hormone. Okay, it's like that good feeling you get when someone gives you a hug. That's oxytocin, which, believe it or not, hugs will make you less hungry because oxytocin has a blockade effect on that venyloid TRPV receptor in our brain. Okay, now let's move it forward a little bit more and let's talk about a review that was published that took a look at uh, 28 individuals. These 28 individuals were divided into two groups. One group consumed oleic acid, one group consumed palmitic acid. Two different kinds of fats, one with oleic acid that turns to OEA and one that does not. Isofat, meaning they consume the same amount of fat, they consume the same amount of calories, and at the end of 28 days, they found that the group that consumed the oleic acid lost body fat via DEXA scan, and the group that consumed the palmitic acid gained body fat via DEXA scan. Same calories, same fat, just literally different kinds, proving that the OEA ended up triggering a big fat loss. Okay, the oleic acid converted into oleoethanolamine. I promised I wouldn't say that again, but I did, ultimately triggering the fat loss. So here's the point. When in doubt, olive oil up. When in doubt, avocado up. Do not cook with olive oil, but cook with avocado oil. Add olive oil on top of salads. Okay, just make sure you're tracking your calories because at the end of the day, calories do still matter. But I want you to know that when you're in doubt for a fat to use, it's okay to use olive oil. It's not, it doesn't need to be demonized like it's been demonized so much. Anyhow, this breaks it down. I love olive oil. See you soon.